All right, so since we're talking about simple harmonic motion, you know, if you drop a uh, pebble into the water, then, you know, and you guys know like the ripple effect or whatever, well, these follow a sine wave function. Um, the moves, or the waves move outward, and, you know, shape, uh, same thing as like if you're fishing, when you throw like a, you know, you throw your uh, anchor out in the water, not anchor, whatever, you throw your uh, bob around the water, then it lays down like some waves going out from it. Um, so these are just examples of simple harmonic motion. They eventually stop and they start spreading out, but at the very beginning they have a nice pretty little sine uh, function going with them. So here's what happens in example seven when you are given an actual equation. So when you're given the equation, uh, d equals four cosine of six pi t, your maximum displacement is four. All right, so if um, we're gonna find our maximum displacement, that is gonna be our four value here, okay? That's your amplitude, but that's also your maximum displacement from your equilibrium. So you would say that D is equal to four. So if you need to find the frequency, don't forget your frequency is found by the formula of taking W divided by two pi. So if your W, here is 6 pi, you're going to take 6 pi divided by 2 pi. So your frequency means is a 3, so that means you're going to have 3 cycles per second for this equation. Um, find the value of d when t is equal to 4. So if t is equal to 4, all we have to do is just plug this in and find out what our d is. So we're going to have 6 cosine, or not a 6 there, my bad, that's a 4. So you have a 4 cosine of 6 pi times 4, which means you're going to have a 4 cosine of 24 pi. Well, 24 pi, that is, if you think about 2 pi, that's one revolution around your circle. So um, if you go around your circle 12 times, you're going to be at cosine of 24 pi, which is just coterminal with the cosine of 2 pi or cosine of 0. And on your circle, when you're at 2 pi, your cosine is a positive 1, so your answer would end up being just 4. So then finally, for the last part here, if you want to find the least positive value of t for which d is equal to 0, you just set your equation equal to 0. So we're going to say 0 for d equals 4 cosine of 6 pi t, and you're going to have to divide by 4, divide by 4, so we get 0 equals a cosine of 6 pi t. And what that means is you need to find out where the cosine of t is equal to 0. And we find out that <coughs> we get wherever cosine t is equal to 0. So that means your x values have to be 0. So on your circle, That'd be it. Pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, uh, 5 pi over 2, because you keep going around in a circle more, 7 pi over 2, and on. So what you need to do is you need to multiply your pi. Sorry, multiply your pi over 2. We're going to take the first value, because that's the first one you meet on your circle. You're going to multiply pi over 2 times your 1 over 6 pi. The reason you're doing that is because that is going to end up being um, your period. So if you multiply these, you get a pi over 12 pi, which is just equal to a 1 12. So that means that your least positive value of t where d is equal to 0, this is the smallest value you can go and still get a 0 when you plug it in. So if you plug a 1 12th in for t, okay, 6 pi times a 1 12th would give you a pi over 2, which would give you cosine of pi over 2 is 0. 0 times 4 would give you 0. That's the smallest value. You can't plug in like a pi over 4 or a pi over 6 or anything like that to get a 0. But your smallest value would end up being a 1 12th. So that 
is the end of your chapter four notes, end of your chapter four eight and chapter four. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, fun chapter into trig as much as I did. Whoa!